What's going on guys, Proof here Today I bring you episode 20 of the Proof Positive Podcast Or I believe season 2, episode 5 I want to say You didn't even ask me if I was ready You were just like, click the button <laughs> Were you ready? No I'm sorry No you're not <laughs> Not at all <laughs> <laughs> And today I'm joined by Corey Kai Hey The rest of our podcast crew was either asleep or busy Or couldn't make it for Or inebriated Yes or they couldn't make it for extenuating circumstances, and for that we understand. But today it's going to be Corey Kyle myself for a two-man show. And today we're going to be talking about the potential, or the prospect, or the, the theory of Cyborg and Vanguard. And with the newly released mechanic of the G-Guardians. So we're going to probably split up half and half. Maybe a little more skewed one way or the other, we don't know, because we go off the cuff with these things. But that's where we're going to go. And as always, if you like what you hear, leave me a like, leave me a comment, subscribe, share with your friends, let the let the show keep growing, because these are fun to do. So, we'll start off with Cyborg. So, for those that aren't aware, if Vanguard is your first trading card game, Sideboarding is a side deck that has access to X amount of cards in it, that in between games, you can take cards out of your main deck a one for one trade with stuff out of your sideboard from zero to however many you have and it's usually stuff that is either situational stuff that you would have liked to have in your main deck but you didn't have space for it stuff that helps you in your unfavorable matchups like if you're weak against aggressive decks you have more control elements in your sideboard or it's just stuff that you thought would have been nice to have but your space just ran low on it for some other reason did I miss anything about what a sideboard is? No, that's pretty much it. All right. And so what we're going to talk about is the theory of if Vanguard had a sideboard, what would it be like, what it wouldn't be like, what would we like to have, what could be the problems with it, all kinds of stuff like that. And so let's see. We'll start. If if Vanguard had a sideboard, that would mean best two out of three format. Which I'll, I'll just say now, don't get your hopes up. We'll never have two out of three format. <laughs> This is just theorizing. This will never happen. Bushy Road is too on the cuff of, hey guys, don't be mean to your opponents. Have fun, know your cards, and shake hands afterward. We're never going to get a competitive format for this game, ever. I wouldn't say never. I, okay, I'll say it's a snowball's chance in a sauna <laughs> that we will have a competitive <laughs> format for Vanguard. Regardless of how much the players want it, Bushy Road don't care. That's not what they're going for when they made this game. Thusly, they don't want to adapt to change. But, the, like, I get it that Vanguard is meant to be a little more fun than their two or three other card games that they have. Mm -hmm. But in terms of overall sales of their card games, Vanguard, from what I know, is far and away better in terms of overall revenue versus Buddy Fight, Y Schwartz. I think they have one, uh, Luck and Logic is their new one, but that's oh, brand new. Man, it's new. That's brand new, so that you can't count that. But between... The big three that they have of Vanguard, Weishwars, and Buddy Fight. Vanguard is far and away the cash cow of Bushy Road TCGs. So I don't see why they wouldn't implement a format that favors a more competitive aspect, which would draw in more people, which then draw in more revenue. And so it's a win-win in my opinion. Now, I get that they're saying that they don't want to take up time with events because Vanguard games can run long. But at the same time, they have a best 2 out 3 format in Buddy Fight which also can go to time every round because some decks are slow like that. Yeah. So, Bushy Road, if you're listening, I doubt it, but I can, <laughs> I can, I can dream. Consider the possibility of a best 2 out of 3 format for Vanguard because the fans, the players will love it. And if time is an issue, charge for events because if you charge for events, you can pay the venue to get more time which then give you more time to have more time at the events. And, and I know better price time. support. And better price support instead of these, I don't want to say junk promos, but promos that not everybody necessarily wants. And give, maybe you can like fund like paid trips to California for best uh, for the top two teams instead of just the best one team. And then you don't have to uh, lose revenue in that sense or lose funds in that sense. So everybody wins. If my, you, my thing is that Every year for every major event that they have, be like, hey guys, we want your opinion. Fill out the survey for things that. that you do 
and things that you want. And then we'll fill it out. We'll have a giant public <coughs> opinion of all the same thing. And then the next year, it'll be like, oh, man, so we're changing it because we feel like it. Everybody and their grandmother this year wanted what we had last year for teams, which was you played until you lost twice. Oh, well, well not, not played until you lost twice. Well, you, even if you lost twice, you could still play mm-hmm. for the sake of playing. Now it's just it's double elimination. So the moment you lose twice, you have no chance of making top eight, period. Which was how it was two years ago when, yep. when the whole fiasco of round zero happened. Yep. Man, round zero. I'm not even talking about round zero. <laughs> that was that was in the past. Forget the past. I remember. I remember that was the time of round zero. So that's how I could put two and two together. But I'm pretty sure everybody in their grandmother was like two out of threes. Let's yes. go. I Pay would. for events so we can get better prize support. Yes. We in there. What did Bush Road do? Neither one of those. Oh man, you gotta do those <laughs> surveys. Oh man, we left them there. Well, we on the plane to Japan, so never mind. Yep. Bye. <laughs> bye, Doctor O. Oh, bye. <laughs> Man, it'll be great though. So, for Cyborg and Vanguard, to me, there's a few ways that they could go about it. And I don't know which one's necessarily the best, but we can cover each potential option. Option one is that it's unlimited cards that can go in it, but it's 15 cards. Because most other games that have sideboards are 15 card side decks. So what this means is that you can have triggers, you can have ones, twos, threes, maybe you can even have uh, other strides in your deck if you want to switch out complete strategies. You can pretty much have unlimited access to your card base in your clan to be able to add these 15 cards into your deck. Now the issue with that is that some clans have far better options than other clans do. For example, Kagero has a million ways to do something versus say Spike Brothers because the first clan that popped to my head because I'm biased like that. Oh, of course you are. Of course I'm biased. <laughs> Everybody knows. Versus Spike Brothers which has far less options at their disposal. And so where Kagro could be like oh you're playing this? Well let me take out all the stuff that's all about power and pull out the stuff that's more about control and then shut you down even harder whereas Spike Brothers doesn't have as much flexibility there because clan support has been lopsided since the game has started like that. Anything you want to add to that? No, that's it. That's about it? Yeah. Let's see, I had a point, and then I lost it completely. Oh, wow. You know, Nice that you admit to your viewers that, hey, I had something that we could converse about, but because I'm so biased about Fight Brothers, nah, what and I that? just wanted to throw that out there, <laughs> I lost my entire idea. <laughs> so, I was like thinking like, Oh yeah, and so with that idea of sideboarding, you can like completely transform your whole deck around to where you enter the tournament with a G-based deck and then your opponent is like, oh snap, you playing the grade two game? Let me take out all this generation stuff and then throw on all this limit break stuff to where it doesn't matter if you play the grade two game, I can still have my same general format or the same general idea of what I want to play. And so that's where sideboarding can be positive is that it opens up a little more competitive psychological game with your opponent versus always being the same stuff over and over again. You can enter it with one deck, completely have a transformative sideboard and go into a completely different strategy within your same clan, which benefits certain clans like Aqua Force, which can play the grade two game well and then transform into like Tetra Drive or Transcore, whatever. Ooh, excuse me. That waffle kicking back. <laughs> <laughs> so good at waffle guard man that chicken and waffles was amazing I don't care what you say so delicious and so like the pros of having a completely unrestrictive sideboard is that it can add an element of unpredictability which is nice because not everything is so stagnant because that's one of the gripes with Vanguard is that all the decks are the same and everything is stagnated pretty much and it opens up it's a little more creativity because me, like I love Spike Brothers, but I also like deck building and seeing, trying stuff out, seeing how it works. Not necessarily throwing in random stuff, but like thinking about it and analyzing it and always tweaking for the future and always tweaking for, to improve my deck in some capacity, which is why I like the restrictive nature of like a 50 car limit and then trying to work within those confined limits. And sideboarding can give you a little more flexibility with that and where you can like switch things up while also staying within the confines of Vanguard. The cons to it, like, 
being transformative can also be a con because like like I mentioned before, like the card pools of some clans just far and away exceed some card pools of other clans, which make you wonder like will Bushiroad release other stuff to support the lower funded clans? Funded clans? Under supported clans. There we yeah. go. Wait, under underfunded? Un- not, under- they're not throwing money at it, it's just they don't care. Technically they kinda are when you print cards for it, you kinda are throwing money at the wall for it. Well, doesn't mean everybody else is. Ah. Make more Spike Brothers Bushy Road. What? You just got Spike Brothers. I don't care. <laughs> I'm a clan that gets support one time a year. So the But they get a whole booster dedicated to themselves. They get like five viable cards out of that whole booster. I don't believe that. I believe that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we get one clan support per year outside the fighters collection. And then it's always at the tail end of said mechanic going into the said new mechanic. And then we got to play the catch up game for a whole nother year all over again with what we have. Or well, everybody like Kagro getting three sets of support with the new mechanic. Spike Bros still waiting for their new stuff to get their hand in the in the cookie jar. I'm sorry. You have a PG with a mechanic. Do Bermudas? No. They will come uh It's gonna suck. <laughs> Just cause it's gonna be bad doesn't mean they won't have it. They always get their support well after everybody else has gotten their their, their hand in the cookie jar and then they move on to something else. So the Spike Brothers. No. Yeah. No. We got our Legion stuff in December of 2014. Uh Uh-huh. January, February of 2015, Stride happened. There were only two (laughs) sets that supported Legion. 16, 17. That's not my fault. When when did I get a Legion? For what clan? For Bermudas. I don't know. When did you get a Legion? It was a promo, and it was bad. (laughs) Oh, yeah, Quancy. (laughs) She's straight, straight out of Mississippi. <laughs> Quancy. Like she was on the farm. Uh, what's her? Milking a cow. Oh, my God. Before she got picked up by some random mermaid crossing the Mississippi, being like, come with us. Grabbed her by the hand and dragged her through the water. I can't with Bushy Road. <laughs> Name changes. Ugh. And it's always your clans. Can't. I can't. What think- is a corn flower, flower maiden? Oh, <laughs> Cornhole maiden. No, I'm not calling her that. <laughs> can't with your names cool. you're worse than bushy road i might be i can't think of a single spike brothers card that has that's been changed from japan over to that's because they don't care maybe ogre to ogle but then then again like that's how the translation was meh meh but other than that it's been fine so the second option for stride or not stride for sideboard is that you keep the same 15 cards but you're restricted from being non-trigger base to just being within your ones and threes which means that you come in with your set trigger lineup and then you have to form your sideboard around said trigger lineup it may not be as fair but it's an option that crossed my mind just because somebody can go from playing 12 crit against one particular opponent to then being like sideboard now and then all of a sudden they like oh i need these stand triggers go into these stand triggers now to play like some kind of slower grind out game and then they can win in that fashion so in that way trigger like do you want to allow the triggers to be in your sideboard or would you rather have it more confined to your ones and your three lineup so that's something that somebody could think about i don't know if that's necessarily better it kind of messes with your opponent because if you play the first game and it's like oh man all these crits and it's like well now he's going to play around the fact that I play nothing but crit, so let me swap out crit for stand so that they block the vanguard and I just stand on my rear guards. It's not necessarily a bad thing because it's the same It's the same element of surprise that you're swapping out things for, your, for things that your opponent wouldn't expect otherwise, mm-hmm. but it's easier for you to check a trigger than it is for you to draw into like a one-elk or a two-elk or something because yeah. they just naturally happen. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of fifty fifty about it. It makes sense because it's the element of what a sideboard is, but at the same time it seems unfair because triggers are basically what the game hinges oh, on. Right. It does seem more fair to allow you to still have your use of swapping out your triggers to be a little more mode changey. I like that word mode changey. Be a little more mode changey with your your particular deck. I'm not gonna stop using it. <laughs> <laughs> Like that's not much else you can say about that, minus the fact that like you can swap out all your threes for twos to play a, a more grade two base game, 
But then you're playing right to three. Judge, I don't have any. I took them all out for twos. Exactly. I played four title assault. Four this dude that's white title assault. Four this dude that's not generation break restricted. Four this dude that get me a free. Never getting a free. <laughs> Take this nine. Take all this. Because then it's still like the mind games with your opponent. Like they know I have all these generation break stuff. Let me swap it out for knowledge generation break stuff. Or even like the rock, paper, scissors game where like they know I have this. But they think I'm going to switch out, so I'm not. So when they switch out, I'm going to catch them off guard type thing. Which you can still do with the trigger game. So may not be the best option, but it's something that crossed my mind when going through this. And then the third option that I could think of was that you condense down the number of cards that you can change to not make it so transformative and more make it more tech-based. Kind of like you can't, like, how do I word it? Instead of being like taking out all 15 cards for this particular opponent and putting in 15 new cards, you have to maintain the same general core of your deck of being, say, your G base. You can't take out all your G support and then putting in all limit break stuff. You have to still re remain a G base deck, but you can transform your, your deck around to accommodate yourself a little bit better. Maybe adding in more of one particular GB1 to help against this particular opponent versus what it was when you brought in the deck in its base form. I kind of like that because it kind of opens you up to still having a solid deck entering the tournament versus trying to have an answer to everything. You have one deck and you just have certain tech choices to be able to answer certain particular meta calls. What do you think about that? Uh, I think it's still the same issue as the first one where it's still fine because everybody gets options to put into their sideboard, but even though the sideboard is condensed, it still won't stop the people that have more support in their one card pool from just having better tech options. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, you can play this one of that one thing, that's cool, but when I see my one of of my one thing, it's going to completely blow you out of the water because it exists. Right. And you just don't have that option because you don't have the same level of support. Mm -hmm. It seems like all he's going to boil down to is clan support in general. Man. However, the last option, make the entirety of your G-Zone strictly create elemental cards. Because the way Bushiro made create elemental cards is that they answer particular matchups. But they're so awkward to fit into your deck because if you add two of the guy that says you can only Legion back grade ones or higher, but then not face a Legion deck, you're now stuck with a 9k vanilla that does exact, exactly nothing for you in all your other matchups. But if it's in your sideboard and you go against a Legion-based deck, you can now make this meta call to where you can swap out these grade twos to then put in this particular Crate Elemental unit to then counteract this particular strategy. And since Crate Elementals are so voluminous because there's like, I want to say 15 to 20 different Crate Elemental cards released as of Generation or GB6. Generation 6. <laughs> like a G6. Oh my God. <laughs> Since there's like 15 to 20 crate elemental cards out now, it kind of, you can have a little more leeway, be like, let me have two of this guy, three of this guy, but still have up to the 15 card count. So I think that's a little more fair than the first three options because it's still card pool restricted in terms of your base deck, and that's always how Vanguard's gonna be. But in your terms of your G zone, everybody has the same crate elementals card pool to pull from, and it's based on your your knowledge of said meta to then fill out your sideboard with these particular crate elemental cards. I think it's a little more fair. I think it's fair, but I think until we get more sets that it won't be as viable just because there are a handful of crate elementals that just don't do anything at all. There's like, oh man, you're a 7k booster, but you're a bigger booster when you have more crate elementals in your G zone. Or you are a limit break four enabler or you are like some card that works in one specific situation that wouldn't ever show up normally that you wouldn't want to commit more than one slot to like you have the, the viable ones like you have Pockle mm -hmm. that unlocks stuff so that can go for Link Joker you have the one where it acts like Miss Mist so that's mm -hmm. good for like blocking legions or legion based deck but more often than not, the ones that exist are just like, I'm here to be here for cute art to be commissioned, and that's it. <laughs> like, You're not wrong. 
like the more they go along and the more they're like well you know this card does this and this card does that it'll it'll be better but as of right now especially because there are no crit elemental great grease mm-hmm. and the majority of them are grade ones and great one space is already tight because that's basically the core of your initial ride mm-hmm. and your boosters and what you want them to do it it's kind of hard but it's probably the most fair out of the three just because everyone has the same pool of options mm-hmm. the only con or downside to that is that like you said some some of the crate elementals are only viable in certain deck types so say you need say you're playing glendios for example you only you're the only one of a few decks that have the ability to play the dark elemental whatever it is named Do- doxix sounds right i think that's the japanese name but like you can't change out your deck since if your entire sideboard is crate elementals you can't change out some of your grade threes to make space for this, the limit break enabler if you don't already have a limit break vanguard in your deck yeah. stuff like that so even then it's still kind of funky in terms of how to go about balancing sideboard because it's really going to come down to clan support in turn because in other card games such as magic or force of will they have their five colors and then six if you count artifacts slash colorless cards so all the support is more condensed in terms of those uh six colors well five colors and then insert non-color based thing here and so versus vanguard which has 23 clans if that's right think 23 that sounds 24 right 24 with gears and then i think 25 if you count sword boys okay so 24 23 to 25 clans and where support is so dispersed and sporadic to where it's always going to be thinking about the idea of support versus what's not getting support and so it's always going to be funky to try and balance out how to go about the sideboard but those are the the few options that came to my mind if you have an option or an idea or a theory about how to go about sideboard definitely leave me a comment and then I'll go over it with you and see how we see how we can go about this and maybe Bushro can pick it up along the way. Wishful thinking, but a guy can dream. <laughs> Let's see anything else you want to mention or touch on about Cyborg before we move on? Mm, no, that's about it. I think we covered about the the bare bones of it without going to technical mumble jumble we about it. Let's see. Before we go on to G Guardians. Anything else you want to touch on slash rant about before we go over there? This whole secret rare uprising thing. Is this your rant? No, this is not my rant. Okay. <laughs> I just want to know on what planet people think that these cards are this expensive just because it is the weekend of pre-release. For example... The- oh man, Abyss. <laughs> oh man, Opened Abyss is purple and the other one not as purple so you give me four copies of both of these cards, you could have one of this. Legit. Huh? Like, what? Like, I don't understand. I think I saw one guy that was like, I would trade these four secret rares for four, let me, I would trade these four Legion rare copies, pairs, for four secret rares plus money or something like that, something crazy like that. However, what people fail to see is that Yes, it's currently valued as being less expensive based on ideal 808, but A, it's wish listed, which means it could always go up in price. Oh no, it's gonna go up in price. It's gonna go up in price. And B, if it don't be surprised if it is still less than the secret rare SP and triple rare versions of said Legion mates or Legion pairs, because the booster, the uh, extra booster that it came out of is no longer in print, so, which makes the the other three versions of it more rare and thusly probably going to be more expensive. So, if you're seeking a, le- a secret rare abyss pair like your boy Proof here. For that deck that he don't play because it's not Spikes. For now. Uh-huh. Let me, let Spike let, let, <laughs> let the newness of Spikes wear off before I. Yeah, it already wore off. It's a new month. That don't mean nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it means nothing. So. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted. Uh-huh. <laughs> if you're looking for a secret rare version of it, like your boy, wait until sneak 
give it like two weeks after release weekend and then see how the prices are looking there because people are being crazy offering a hundred dollars a card for this pair which shouldn't be the case because i'm not gonna shout 200 bucks for this doggone pair for nothing i'm gonna wait till it come out a little bit lower i'm gonna check out prices and see if i can make a viable trade with somebody i have i got options basically too long didn't read version wait be patient you'll get it anyway sound good just about what else you want to touch on in terms of this crazy hype why is glorious bloom so oh. expensive like glorious bloom or secret rare asha both because secret rare asha is going for like 150 bucks and a handshake and then like two nickels rubbed together everywhere i see it worst trial deck out of the free <laughs> most expensive secret rare stride break because by comparison victor and all because all, they all three got a secret rare reprint didn't they yeah alt mom and victor are both like 35 40 bucks and then all of a sudden asha it's like oh man titties <laughs> money <laughs> reference we gotta pay them shelling out more cash all oh, this is accurate <laughs> Bermuda said the precedent of secret rare slash all art body parts aka SP legs for Bermudas being people shelling out crazy amounts of money for it oh man I should come in she female triple digits off top legit <laughs> but alt model in this robot here don't care 35s right man <laughs> not spending money on a man <laughs> don't you know the who I am the card game caters the dude. you know who I what am what I look like dude spending money on a dude <laughs> mm -mm. booster pack price robot <laughs> crazy I can watch that on TV yep I play it on video games girl well I ain't getting that I'm playing I'm sorry that was too far <laughs> <laughs> like oh man never been in presence of girl 2D best girl need. I'm sorry. Corey Kai's <laughs> tears right now. Oh my fine. god. I'm sure you get your two glorious bloom that you need. Bobby there has over. been a total of six pizza boxes so far that have been opened. Only one glorious bloom has been opened out of those six pizza boxes. You talking about just in Connecticut? Yes. <laughs> it's either Alt Mile or some secret rare jank. That's not titties. In terms of keeping my podcast family friendly, I can't on good conscience call it S or SCR. One more time. Secret R. Titties. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to stop Corey Carr from saying it. Ugh. And then the pre release price for Glory Blue was 75 bucks. Yep. Like, to who? Who playing Neos that hard? Nobody. People are hyped because they saw like 100,000 K columns. That's been a thing since the cars have been released. Anybody that actually played Neos knows that Bloom is a strong mechanic. But clearly. Like, oh man, watch the episode. How that 56? How that 69K? Aren't those just great ones? I need to understand. I was confused. No lie. I was kind of confused about uh, the Bloom triggers in the episode. It was like, oh man, this Katrina here. Plus twos. This Katrina here, plus fours. This Katrina here, plus like plus twelves at that point. The bloom triggers aren't for the cards that are being called. It's for the cards that are called. It's for the cards that exist after that card is called. And since they all come out at the same time, man. Or there was three on the field, if I remember correctly, that she called out that last one. Mm -hmm. And then everything blooms at that point in time. But then the last one that was called only gets one bloom trigger no i think she had two on board and then called two they called out two more man it was so much happening i didn't want to go back and look at it because like all right i got the left one and then the back most right one over here in the cut right here they get bloom triggers and then the right most one and then the one in the front of it and then the one to the left over behind his niece and nephew that one gets two bloom <laughs> triggers. <laughs> so break it down for the people that are like me that are a little bit confused by how the bloom mechanic triggered in terms of the power boost for Katrina, Thuria, Greenshot, Elf, 
all those guys. So they all say when your Ugger X card, whatever it is in the card name is, comes into play. Mm-hmm. So essentially, when you're playing Bloom, you just have to remember that the card that you're playing does absolutely nothing, and it's the cards that are already on the board that trigger Bloom. Okay. So you have one Katrina on the board, and you call one. The one you call does nothing, but the one that already exists gives you plus fours. Okay. If you have two, the one you call doesn't do anything, but the ones that already exist give you plus four twice. Okay. That's easy enough. This made this made it overly complicated in the episode for no reason. For no it, it felt like no reason. Like she needed to win. I get that. Spoilers, I'm sorry. She needed to win so she tried to go the best about it the way that she felt. But then all of a sudden I was like, all these things are triggering at the same doggone time. I'm lost. However, it's one in the morning, so I'm gonna let it slide. <laughs> It's weirder if you have multiple on the board and then you call two at the same time, like like Prima there or something, because it's like, okay, these, these came in at the same time. This one existed. It sees that two came in so that you get X triggers. The balloon triggers twice in that scenario. Yeah. And then the one, same thing in the corner, two came in, bloom triggers twice for this. Mm-hmm. This one came in, but only sees one other one came in because it can't count itself. So plus fours. And then the same thing for the last one. Man. Okay, that makes sense. Now, now that I know that, I'm still not gonna get bodied by it. <laughs> <laughs> However, on Black Masaki in the episode, being like, Psh, like there's, chill. there's no Ash on the board. Psh, I'll take this on the chin. PG, PG, we made it. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I was like, yep. Did, did she not? Did she not have a thirty on the board? Or was it all green shots plus one extra person? It was. I think it was four green shots the first time around, Man. and it then became four Katrinas. The second time around, plus one insert thing here. Yeah. And if it was Thuria, she could have copied Asha, got the crit, and then Masaki would have been forced to PG the first well, one. Well, she could have she copied Asha anyway, because it says target one unit, not one rear guard. Ah, but she chose to go for the greed and go Man. for the power. Not necessarily greed, but go for the power to bust through whatever. Well, it was only plus 10s, not plus 15, because, you know, marketing. Yep, because they had to go with the uh, Verano. Had to, had to pimp out her... Legitly, almost considering her body, not her body, her text or card art has her body in a provocative position. <laughs> I don't care, still gonna place it. <laughs> but it's a generation rare of fighters collection. You know, it's gonna be like 20s. No, it's Neo. It's not gonna be like 20s. It's gonna be like 20. Okay, has this hype of G6 not told you anything about? Provocative? I bet you two weeks after G6 is a thing. Asha will be no more than $40. Generation rare Asha? Yep. What about secret rare Asha? We're going to stay over there because it's going to be like <laughs> one. It's going to be still triple digits for whatever reason. Speaking of secret rares and a case. So apparently, Abyss is in every case. That's what I saw and heard. I was ill. Like, ill. It's the most commonly won pull. So, so all you shadow players that bought your shadow splits, congratulations. You got a secret rare Abyss for free. <laughs> <laughs> And everybody that's charging 200 bucks for it, I'm sorry, it's not going to sell for that. It's really not. <laughs> that card is about to be the most circulated thing. I'm going to be like, open a binder. Oh, not, Secret Rare Abyss. Everybody has Secret Rare Abyss next page. It's going to be like Glenn, Glenn Daddy. It's Man. Like, it's like, psh, that hype. For those that are new to Vanguard, uh, Star Vader Omega Galindios, when it was in Japan, was the first ever reverse triple R rarity. Only came in one a case in Japan. People thought when it came over to America... It was gonna be the exact same thing for when the set release. So when people started dropping pizza boxes of Glendios, they're like 150 bucks or somewhere around there. Probably like 80 to 90 to 100 bucks. People like sold. Give me that. And then, you can play this deck, best deck. And then a week later, people like, wait, is Glendios the same rarity as your regular Triple R? Thing took a plummet to like 20 real quick, and everybody was upset because they shelled out 300 plus dollars for a play set of Glendios. I was upset because I randomly pulled one. I'm like, man, you said this is going for it right now? Man, about to buy all the what? This triple rare? It's just it's a regular triple rare? Mm hmm. I mean, it says reverse triple rare. I'm not <laughs> treating it as just a triple rare. My wallet. And like, it's crazy how Butcher Road would do something like that to reduce the market price of something, but then will not print reprints of anything no. ever. Minus, I mean, they will. They just like gotta the be like grabs. new art plus sparkles plus titties. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so salt. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Whew. Ready to touch on uh, G Guardians now? No. All right. So, 
again, spoilers for people that haven't watched the episode. Which you should have because it's been half a day already. Exactly. So I'm sure you've either seen it on North America slash Vanguardian slash wherever you may frequent Vanguard forms. But G Guardians is a mechanic to where you pitch a heel trigger that's in your hand to then call this now green bordered card, which I love because green is my favorite color. I hate it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> where you call a green bordered G unit from your your uh, your G zone. It has to be face down, of course, into your guardian circle, and it has 15k shield base value, and then more likely than not, they're all going to have do something on the card to give this thing plus 5,000 shield value, which is amazing because Vanguard got to the point to where everything is swinging for a million power and or restands and or has guard restricted in some capacity. So or UPG and they gave all their sacked crits to this random thing. Mm -hmm. To the cut, which you now can't do anything about because you just had to drop a PG for this big Vanguard attack coming at you for 40,000. But that is now mitigated sort of for the G Guardians here. Now, there was no information provided about it minus what was given in the episode, which I just explained to you guys. And Bushiro released on their Twitter account, which I heard about, that they're not giving any more information about G Guardians until April the 4th. So we can expect to start seeing spoilers for G Guardians if they actually do exist in Fighter Collection starting April 4th. Yep, because the set doesn't release in Japan until April 28th, if I remember correctly, or April 20th, somewhere around that time frame. 420, boys. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Blaze it. You know what would be hilarious? If they revealed the Kagro one on 420. <laughs> <laughs> and had a blaze trigger. Like, oh man, call a body. That'd and be... if I have more bodies than you after our call a body, plus 5,000 shields. That's probably what it's going to be. Ew. But there's a ton of questions around it, and we're going to go through each particular question that's been coming to people's minds. The first one is, can you do this before you stride ever, or is it generation restricted? Now, it can go either way because they both have their pros and cons about it. The pros to being able to do it before striding is that it completely shuts down the grade 2 game because after you guard with this G-Zone or the G-Guardian, it goes to your G-Zone face up and it contributes to your... Generation Break 1 skills. Yep, or your ones that say you have X amount of things in your G-Zone face up, like Gear Chronicles for Fate Rider. I think it's Fate Rider, right? The one that gets plus 3s for every face yep. up card. So, so for stuff like Fate Rider, it'll count towards that or and also activates the generation break threes of your things that have like on attack flip one up now your generation break three or activate your now generation break three type stuff so if you do that it shuts down the grade two game by giving you generation break one as you go into your first uh first ride phase or your first grade three ride phase what this does is that it'll give you access to your gb3 skills for me miracle ace for, for Corey Kai here, it gives you more access to your certain particular units. I can't remember which ones have GB3 attached to it. GB3 attached to it? Yeah. Like if it has a Persona Flip GB3 trigger. Not my clans. Not your clans? Not any good ones. Muffin. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it'll, like, it'll activate Lambros on your opponent's first turn. If that like you happen. said, for me, it would activate Lambros. Like I play Aqua Force. I didn't say for. I didn't mean you as in. No, you. I meant like for you. It was like, oh man, for me, because I secretly play Aqua Force in the cut, and I've been buying G two out. And I just got a random Not G for, regulation I, Aqua Force deck in the cut. If I said for me, I totally didn't mean like that. I meant in general, it gives you access to things like Lambros. That's disgusting. Yes, I hope that's, that's where not a that's thing. where a negative comes in. Like, giving, giving you access to your big boss strides before your opponent can even do anything is not very fair at all. I like, mean... Well, not very sorta, fair. Sort of, kind of? Like, it's like, in, in semblance, if you think about it like this, if they're on grade 2 and you activate your G-Guardian to go into grade 3 but be able to activate your generation break skills and they G-Guardian against you... That's fair. It, it's kind of fair. Kind of balanced. But... At the same time, you can't be like, well, I went into this and did triple drive and then be like, oh, man, you did triple drive and I stopped you from sacking me? Well, let me go on the Lambros. <laughs> <laughs> let me counter sack you. Or let me go on the next stage or let me go on the Victor D2 and have this stupid turn but have everything be free because free. Mm -hmm. So, like, it reduces the effort necessary or the normal effort needed to be able to do your big burst turns before your maybe your opponent's ready type stuff. So, pros, 
shuts down the grade two game. It gives you this big guard out of the cut, out of nowhere, that can protect you for the cost of dropping one card out of your hand. What else is a good pot? It activates Generation Break 3 stuff. I think that's really about it. The biggest plus if it activates before your grade 3 turns is that it shuts down the, the grade 2 game. Now, where they can curtail this a little bit is where it gives you a clause to where you either need to be on a grade 3 to use said G Guardian, or you need to have Generation Break, or have at least one face-up card of your G-Zone to be able to do it. So, I think for me, or not for me, but I think it's going to be, I think you're either going to need to be on a grade 3 to be able to use it, or you're going to need to have at least stridden one time before you can do it. And I think that's where Bush is going to go with it, because while they want to pimp out this new mechanic, they also want to keep it a little more fair, in my opinion. Like, do you have a way, a preference which way he's going to go about it? Uh, not entirely. It's more so for me that they need to make it so that it's like you have an incentive to go into it mm-hmm. because we don't know if it is part of your G zone or that it's like you can have eight things in your G zone and you can have two G guardians or something like that. That was going. To, that was going to be the next question. So like. Another thing is, if this is part of your G zone, but you can use it before you go into, you know, like Generation Stride, mm-hmm. for all you American dub watchers, <laughs> it makes it kind of less fair. If it's like, okay, I can make space for my G Guardians, but because I can use them and I because I can go into stuff like Land Broke First Stride, and I have more space to play more of them because it's like I don't have to wait that additional turn to go into. You know, like Lambros or Next Stage or like I don't need to or have, a Tetra Boil or something like that. I don't that. need to have a generic first try to start triggering stuff for the future turns. Yeah. So it, it kind of or Diablo. Right. First try Diablo because that's there. <laughs> <laughs> so I get what you're saying. Like that's gonna be the next. Like, is this gonna be part of your normal eight for your G zone, or is it gonna be like your eight plus an extra side deck on top of your G zone? It's gonna be kind of funky considering they just printed out these new play mats for your generation stuff when the when the generation stride stuff came out. Yeah. Now, if it adds to it, they may not. Will it be the same? Where it'd be like you now have a ten to twelve card G zone and you just put it on top of it. They need to be separated so your opponent can distinguish between your G guardians versus your non G guardian stuff. I, it's a whole big funky thing. But it's kind also, of, can they not make a G, if this is like before you have to strike can they not make a g guardian that flips something face up please please that'd be stupid oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so dumb oh yeah first try to uh, root flare first try miracle ace first try lambros first try victor v2 first try first try dog. victor plus what do you mean <laughs> Yeah, what if, you, what if you use your G Guardian and got two counter blasts? You need something else to do with it. Ew, I hope they don't call counter blasts. Nah, I mean, like, if you use it but you don't have two damage taken, you can't Vic Plasma first turn. Whatever, I take the crit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm more in favor of it being more restricted to you having a, a grade three or having a, a face up G unit already. Just because while I like the idea of doing Miracle Ace first turn. I also know that how degenerative it could be because the idea of the G Garden is to increase the defensive option. But if you make it available before your first stride and then go into your big stride, what was the point in doing or adding the G Gardens in the first place? Because it kind of changes the the flow of the offensive to your big stuff earlier. That's my take on it. Huh, I just thought of something. What? What if it's not G restricted, but you have to be at a certain level of damage before you can use it? Hmm. Like, do you have to be at four or five to be able to use it? At least four to be able to use it? Because, actually, if I remember from the episode, like, they kept focusing on this heel trigger, like, way before... Right, the Topaz whole game. Drew a heel trigger? Well, like, don't want to guard with this. My future huh? depends on it. Like, I'm like, what? I thought she was focused on her two stride enablers for a high Yeah, because, like... It makes sense, because, like, you need to stride into your Asha, and you can't use the second one because you want to be able to stride in your future turns as well. Like, they play that really well, in my opinion. Because I know, I know that the, the mechanic itself was kind of spoiled. Like, not what it does, but just what the name was. Mm-hmm. So, I was like, well, I'm expecting her to draw, like, some new card or something. Mm-hmm. So, just like, I need this heel trigger. I was like, what? <laughs> 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 what 
like, I never, I had no clue that she was focused on the heel trigger the whole time, and then it happened. And then I was like, what? She was like, Generation Strike. I was like, you are not Diablo. You cannot do that. That is a great zero. <laughs> the G Guardian drop what? Right in the Misaki. I got a million cards in my hand, but none of them are heels because they're all bottom decked. I can't G Guardian. The thing I was the thing I was mad about was that Misaki was surprised at the G Guardian, but then she was upset she didn't have one to activate her own G Guardian. <laughs> Like why, are you, like, why are you surprised if you knew that they were a thing before going into this game? It's like, man, you only had, like, three cards in hand? Man, you would have a heal. Mm-hmm. I actually like that, because, like, drawing a heal used to be, like, one of the worst things in Vanguard if you didn't play Legion. Yep. Now it's like, hey, drew a heal. I'm waiting for, like, the future expansion where it's like, psh, drop this crit, give something. Can we not? Just have, a, like, a G Guardian for, like, all the triggers, please? Chill, they're trying to make stands a thing now. Do what? No. G Guardian stand. <laughs> no! <laughs> it has a blue border on it. <laughs> Ew. It's gonna be jank. Kind of makes sense, because, like, the regular G, G uh, units have a red border, so you three drive checks. You have, because, like, pseudo draw trigger kind of thing, because you're pitching a grade three for it. But then the heel one is the extra guard. Then you can make the blue one being able to stand something. Stand or, my vanguard. It probably. And then you can make the crit one, the yellow one, extra damage to the team or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but the trigger units already have a yellow border at the bottom. True, true. Way to fuck my point. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Oh, well, it was a fun thought for a second there. So they're going to be like, oh, man, swing, guard, two to pass, pitch this crit trigger, plus five. Yeah, it That'd could. Be so gross. It could. <laughs> before, before my drive step, I'm going to pitch these two critical triggers to get my Vanguard plus five. That's about to be so gross. <laughs> Chill. It has to, be, has to be critical triggers, though. Chill, bro. It has to be, has to be a crit that has 4,000 power or less. I'm cool with that. I got two of those in my spikes. <laughs> or, like, the, or the stand you, one could be the same thing. Being like, like do well, you want to put this on board and put it in soul and draw a card? Or do you want to pitch it for more power without the draw? Mm-hmm. Options give you more flexible game. They can do the same thing with the stand trigger. Being like, before I drive check, I'm going to pitch the stand trigger, stand this column. No. Or no. Stand, stand this one rear guard. No. No. Stand one rear guard. No, then. I don't like that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather be like, after my drive step, pitch these stand trigger in two cards and then restand all my vanguards? Mm. I can try it into this G. What would he call it? It can't be like a G stand. That sounds kind of jank. I don't know, G something, insert G thing here with blue border to signify standing. Mm. <laughs> That's why I kind of like that we don't get information until April, because it gives you, like, the time to theorize what these things could do. And then they about to just be like, so these cards are about to be two a pack in fighter collection because they double rares, they all suck, they all have a cost, and have fun not getting these because they about to be short print. <laughs> and they about to be like five dollars a pack. I just want, I just want my one for Spike Brother. I want my offensive lineman dude. Being I'm telling you, they all about to be dragons. The Spikes have zero dragons. Do you, uh, congratulations on getting a dragon. But yours, you got a dragon because you already have dragons in Neo Nectar. But it's ugly. What if they like kept the Maddox with it and made it Sephiroth? No, he don't do nothing. Sephiroth does everything or did everything. He's a worse version of Asha that requires you to hit the entire chain. He does, but that's back when ride chains were popular. Not that ride chain. Psh, crazy. Mm. <laughs> I used to play that ride chain back on, in back in the day, back in my day, old man status. <laughs> like I hope when it comes to these that they don't like. I, I know they want to keep the flavor of their particular clan that they're in, but I hope on everything that the ones that are in the control based clans don't further restrict your opponent. Like, if the Kagura one, sa Kagura one says, G Guardian, like, pay some kind of cost, retire one of your opponent's rear guards that haven't, that are standing right now or something like that. Ew. That would be completely destructive and not in what I hope they go, or not the route I hope they go with these G Guardians here. Or if the Link Joker one, like, locks the front row or locks anywhere. <laughs> the front row? <laughs> It's just him trying to lock your front row. Like, lock one in the front row. That's what I meant. Like, I don't want them to be, because I know, because, psh, words. While the G Guardians are necessary, 
it also gives a boost to the art to the clans that already have good defensive power. Like or, the, oh man, Angel Feather one, pitch a card, heal. Or damage swap, give your Vanguard plus it triggers your your Vanguard GB two or something like that. Ew. So like if you're on uh, Gavrail and you have Maiden of Broken Heart, pitch this thing, swap a damage. Now your Vanguard has plus fours on top of your G Guardian attack or G Guardian guard boost or something oh, like that, God. which is fair. Which I feel like that's what they're going to do with that. But I hope the the Link Jokers, the Narukamis, the Kagros, the Gear Chronicles. I hope they don't retire, lock, put one to the bottom like their clan does. And I hope it's just something generic. Because I like that it helps the aggressive clans that have issues with protecting themselves. Like the the uh, Spike Brothers of the world. Uh-huh. Kind of, sort of. First damage, draw. First stretch, draw. <laughs> Chill, you don't have to worry about that anymore. You just got to worry about the crits now. Oh, so I have to worry about those two draws now being replaced with two crits, so I lose the game on first stride, okay? Chill, it was four draws, now replaced with four crits. Mm-hmm. And then I replace other things to give me mid-battle mid, or mid battle phase draws. Uh-huh. So it balances out. No, it don't. <laughs> but that's why I, I like the idea of the G Guardians. Like, it definitely helps out as a whole because some Vanguard attacks have become incredibly stupid. Especially when you release everything with either a crit or a guard restrict or a restand that aren't in that are in the popular um, money grabbing clans, so it's definitely a welcome addition. And since the guardian is all but confirmed that Die Kaiser will still punch its soul, and you lose it if they check a grade three, so it's still fair in that particular instance. Anything? Any other questions that people had that that we saw when the the negative rage train was coming through North America yesterday? Not really, just the negative rage train. It was like, oh man, it's going to ruin the game. I quit. I don't like this. So so many mechanics are dropping. Ugh. I'm sorry. I People are confusing keywords of stuff that the clans already did. They just gave it a tagline to it, to an actual mechanic like what G-Guardian is. You can't call a keyword a mechanic because it doesn't change what the game is doing. Unlike... G Guardians, Legion, Stride, all that stuff. Those are actual game mechanics. Keywords are not mechanics. They are additions to what the clans already did. They just wanted to give you a keyword to it to make it easier to recall. Yeah. Because people are, are being crazy and dumb. Huh. Off my temporary soapbox. Temporary soapbox. <laughs> See, I can't think of any other question that people had right now. Mine is, is it going to be part of your eight or are they going to expand on it? And my thing is, cause I feel like it wouldn't be much of a mechanic if it was just in one set. If they continue to make other G Guardians with other G skills, don't make them higher than a rare or a double rare, please. <laughs> oh my God, I don't want to be like, yeah, I bought a box. Oh man, a triple rare G Guardian for this clan that's never about to get played. So much work. It's gonna happen. It, it better not. It's gonna happen. They need to all be rares or commons or something. Like, I can see it being no higher than double rare. Like, that, this like where, make this, it shiny, but that, don't make it too shiny. Yeah, that's where it should be. It should be any higher, because you still, because the whole idea of the striding is to, like, turn your, turn these cards in your hand into future versions of themselves, quote-unquote type stuff. And, like, it's still the offensive presence of your strides is what you want to get out of them. But it's nice having this extra option for the G-Guardians. But I don't think they should put so much into the G-Guardians where it takes away from the original strides. Because, like, while I like the idea of having it, I don't want to have a triple triple R version for one for Spike Brothers because I'd rather put that towards an offensive card versus having a defensive card that's going to be a last resort option type thing. Because your primary focus is going to be these G-Guardians, in my opinion, in most of your decks. Huh. I can't think of any one clan that's going to use a full four set of G-Guardians and then stay on grade threes or stride four times with these four things that don't flip personas at all. So, sure, and before their next mechanic is a, a hybrid of the two. Hybrid how? You you can use this as either or. Ew. So you can stride into this generic stride with no skill, mm-hmm. or you can use this as a G-Guardian by pitching a heal. I can see that happening. I really can. <laughs> <laughs> and now I... I honestly... I don't think I would mind that. As long as it doesn't have a skill, or maybe says something like it negates your stride bears, stride break skill, Man. to go into it, but you still get the, the triple drive 
bonus of striding. I can see that. Now you can stride into this thing here because it's like a last resort thing. Negate your stride break ability. But you also have the option of being flexible with it and then just pitching your heel to be able to go into it. That's fair. I can get down with that. All right, we have 55 minutes. I want to keep this like an hour five tops. So you want to rant now? Okay. Go ahead, rant, sir. All right. North America, I came with y'all. Vanguardians, y'all not safe. The secret rare height thing is not a thing. All these height prices so y'all could pay for whatever y'all trying to get into, not a thing. You know you're all going to get whatever you're going to get after the set drops and after these cards all circulate and they all drop down to affordable prices for like those two weeks before something hypes up and it's like, oh man, now the set isn't in print anymore because we bought everything out. Now you can chase your, your super expensive nonsensical things or whatever. Like, no one is paying $30 for Night Rose version 2. No one. No one is paying $110 for Asha. I know somebody that bought a secret rare Asha. He's like, I'm not, I bought one for $60. I'm not spending more than $60 on this. Fair price for a card that already exists. It's not like the card is brand new. You know how stupid this game would be if the cards that had higher rarity than other cards did more things? I mean, the triple rare Asha only does on stride get a body, but the secret rare Asha does on stride counter blast one, search for up to two copies of this body. If you didn't search for two copies of this body, draw a card. Like, you don't understand how dumb this game would be if they were like, hey, the people that have money get better skills. That's what you guys are treating these hype prices at. It's like, oh man, they gotta have the card. They don't own the card. The card do the world. Buy this card that already exists with art that's going at a 90 degree angle instead of a 45 degree angle for a hundred plus dollars. Like, it's already ridiculous for a trial deck version of a card to be eight dollars. Asha is eight dollars right now and is not being played at all. The deck not seeing no play. And it's not seeing no play because people want to be in that safe realm of cards that work or contingency plans that are like, okay, well, even when I suck, this card will save me. This is why angels are so popular. It's like, oh man, I could draw a card hand a terrible jank for the first three turns, but I go in a wrap the L, check a heel trigger, and now I'm completely out of harm's way. Like, so, ugh, like, you look at these results, and it's like, oh man, Shadows 22, Royals 30, Angels, like 11, Grand Blue, randomly somewhat popular. It's not random. No, it's random. No one played Grand Blue before this support. Or you maybe had a handful of people that played it but didn't really get anywhere because they'd run into, like, their stupid matchups or whatever. I mean, I'll address it later. Okay, okay we can address it later. But, like... These clans are only topping because they're popular as they are. Like, you'll see, like, that random handful of things. Like, you'll see that one Tashikaze deck, or you'll see that one Mega Colony deck, or something like that. But it's only because, you know, they didn't run into these things. Like, they're like top 16, these things. Top 16 is not that bad. Like, if it was like top 8, all Grand Blue decks, then you can be like, okay, well, we attest to this being powerful. And I'm not saying Grand Blue is not popular, but like, or powerful, for that matter. But like, people will be like, oh man, it got top 16. Obviously, it's top 10 top 10 clans in the game no no every card games meta will in vanguard is not included from this will be and will always be the decks that are the most played so you'll see these 20 royals and these 22 shadows and these you know 13 angel players or whatever and it's like well you know top 16 is these decks that were played the most and went through the gauntlet and went through the most because they were played the most like, you can't just be like, oh, man, well, Neils aren't meta because one person played it and no, they didn't get there. Obviously, they're not going to get there. The, the, the contingency factor of them getting through versus people that are playing a different deck, but 20 of them playing a different deck and probably not playing each other to knock each other out is completely different. So, for you people that are charging $60 plus for Glorious Bloom, you're crazy. You're crazy and you're stupid because no one except for the hardcore Neo players that are too impatient to wait for the card to drop just like it Salix dropped for those hardcore Link Joker players that were buying him at $15, $60 on pre-release weekend. Now that card is 25 to 30 bucks. Just wait. Be patient. Do not fall into the bottomless trap hole of hype where your entire wallet is just thrown into this disastrous hellion of things. 
just save your money. Like everybody was like, oh man, let me buy these case splits. They so worth. And ideal 808 was like, bruh, check these pure leaf prices of these bloom PGs that are two dollars. Furia is two dollars. Enos is a dollar and fifty cents. Like, I'm sorry. Outside of the fact that you might get Titties Asha and you might get Glorious Bloom at more than two copies, because sometimes they come with five GRs instead of four. You can't split butt. You just about to have a binder of cards that's two and three dollars that you're not about to get rid of at higher than that. So nobody bought the play Enos because there's only five Bloom cards in the set and nobody want to put a grade three at the bottom of their deck for a control draw with either a 10k shield, a card that does everything, a card that does everything but can also boost, or a PG. Can't even. Okay, we can talk about your, your thing thing. Oh, well, to add on what you just said, the only people that should be buying stuff at Hype right now are those that were dead set on playing one of these clans in their upcoming regional, and that regional is next weekend. Uh, I'll see that. I don't also, know. for anybody that paid less for $150 for Grand Blue, you made out. Yeah, because Night Rose is Hype. They, their deck, speaking of Grand Blue, I can see why they started topping because, well, from what I've seen, it's only seven seeds that have been making it to, to the top well, cuts. Well, Night Rose and that team's deck did something, but yeah, but usually as opposed to singles, yeah, well, singles apparently, been you know, seven, seven seeds is wade in the water because Night Miss Stride is a counter blast, not a persona flip. You get two bodies, so you don't have to commit it from hand, and then you can do all the stuff with it. And then they die, so they dodge lock and retire. Exactly. Or so it's like it's like Nogas, but. It's only as rear guard reliant as you set yourself up for. Mm -hmm. And then they go away, but you can use them your next turn. It's not like, oh man, they're on the board. I need them to be on the board. They get locked or they die, and now I'll completely shit out of my entire turn. Mm -hmm. Or it can be like this one player I faced where it was like, I'm going to Night Mist Strike, call out two crit banshees, put these two into the soul, give my hand plus two. So I try, use one to stride, get two bodies, temporary bodies, put them in the soul, I add plus two cards to my hand just for no reason. And then I have my triple drop on top of that, so they plus five. They suddenly became OTT out of nowhere. No, they so they 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 got an organizer turn. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> legit is an organizer turn. Sack two, draw two. Speaking of organizer, this goes out to Raph and Raph specifically. De Leon. De Leon. <laughs> Zeus. De De Lion. <laughs> the Lion. <laughs> Clear sword don't do nothing. Just because your stupid card says you get to search for a grade one and put it on top of your deck, so you're obviously going to get a Karma Collector and be like, hey, put in fives and I can protect myself next turn, don't mean nothing. Claire put, what? Claire puts one on top? There's a card that says you, I think you like you sack it or something, yeah. if you're on Claret Sword, you search your deck for a grade one, put it on top of your deck. Okay. So, or a guy's are in the Claret Sword, search for a body, search for that particular body, yeah. sack it, get the thing, get a PG, gotcha. organize a skill. PG, hey, plus vibes. And then plus random thing. Now triple drive. Yeah. Okay. It don't mean nothing. <laughs> all your options are all the same options as all the other shadow players, except you have no contingency plan. So it's like, oh man, I can't stride. Well, you know, I'll sack my field for 21 because, you know, 21K and a creditor did anything or anybody in strike format. Also, ill. Kagura is ill right now. It's watching. Like, I get updates on my phone for Japanese matches. Mm -hmm. So someone was playing Dauntless, the legend. Mm -hmm. And I was like, aha, you're going to lose because your deck don't do nothing. Does the opponent give him the dream? He broke road into the legend and had Nehalem on the side. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, oh, man, my Vanguard's a great four. Swing for triple drive. Plus five Nehalem. Crit draw all to this guy on the side. Don't care that I don't get, you know, like 95 dry checks. Now, Holland's about to be huge. Mm -hmm. Swing with the legend after it reached in. Conro skill, unflip, plus five in the Holland triggers. Swing for 47 by himself. I'm just like, what? So He's like, oh, you survived that? <laughs> no, Bell. I'm just like, well, well, that, that's a gross. Now, did he play the limb break enabler at all? Nope. Just wait, strode generically until he got the four. He was just like, he was like, generic turns, first strike, Mustafa for GB2 so I can go into the legend, pop a dude, unclip some damage so I don't burn my resources, break ride, 36k, triple drive twice. 
Blake. That's that's gross. So it's not terrible. But it's not terrible, but, but like I can understand how they're like you know like if you're on Dauntless, like your your early stride turns are not as powerful as they could be. Whereas mm-hmm. you know you could just be like okay, I ride the legend. I go into this guy. I'm still an overlord. I do things. These aren't turned off. These aren't like generic rear guards that might get picked off because I might have powerful turns later or hold them in hand because I need to save them. Whereas, you know, I'm on Dauntless, do things, and then it's like consistent because it's like, hey, I have Dauntless, but I didn't draw Dauntless, so I have to write the legend anyway, and now every time I draw a Dauntless, kind of useless except for like the GD2 if I decide to use that or Stripe Potter. Mm-hmm. So, like I, like we said last time, it's not a bad deck, it's just done justify the hype of Dauntless trying to go for 30, 35. So. Yeah, play set of <laughs> this triple rare card that hasn't been in a deck since legion since format no, since, yeah, since, legion since the, like the jump of legion format should not be 120 dollars play set no i think that's a good place to stop with this Meh. one let's see as always guys if you like what you heard leave me a like always comment subscribe share with your friends let those friends share with two other friends tell them to pass it forward and then let's keep this thing going i'm waiting in turn quick update which i'm about my subscriber giveaway i'm waiting for my living proof shirt with the symbol on it to come in from a distributor that I, I found on eBay to see how it looks before I choose to if I want to add it to the giveaway or not. If they look good, definitely gonna add them, and then I'll go into the detail later. If not, then we'll go from there, and I have other ideas about it. But we'll cover more of that later. So I have a question. Yes. So I'm a subscriber. Yeah, you're you're eligible. Hey. But collusion. Nope. Aww. Not going to rig it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go into more of that later. And it's going to be my first face cam video, so you guys can see this mug of mine, which I hope it's going to be good looking by that time. Sure, bro. <laughs> you about to have all the in-the-cut, like, closet fans. Oh, my God. Proof is so good looking. <laughs> Sign my bike card. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Chill. And I'm that- had a copy of Gloria... Since the first set, it was released in. You know, mint in a sleeve, no reprints. I watch a uh, a guy A Drive. I don't know if you heard of him. He's a Pokemon tuber, PokeTuber. 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 He has a PO box where he has people like actually actually mail in like Pokemon cards for him to sign and then send it back to him. Like if I ever get that big, that'd be cool to do. But we'll cross that bridge when I get there. I just now I'm about to get 150 subscribers. I ain't that. Hey. I ain't there yet. Like, you climbing? <laughs> I'm making climbing. it. Like, considering I haven't done this, I've I've done it sporadically to start doing more consistently now. Like, we'll see. The sky's the limit. And with you guys' help, we can reach that limit a little bit faster. And that was cheesy, but I don't care. I'm about to sign off now, guys. Hope you enjoy. As always, like, comment, subscribe. Say bye, Corey Kai. Boy! Later, guys. Be easy. Trade me ashes. <laughs>